Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video what we're going to be going over is creating an interact dot. So what this means is when you hover over something which you can interact with, so when you look at it, a dot will appear on screen or a crosshair to just basically inform the player that they can interact with it. So let me hit play and show what we're going to make today. So if I were to look over at this floor object here or this circle here, nothing happens because obviously we're not going to be able to interact with that. However, if I go over to this cube, I can interact with it, so I've now got this white dot appearing on screen whenever I look at it, and you'll notice if I look up here it's easy to see because it's white, it doesn't actually appear when I look away from it, only when I'm looking at it because I can interact with this. And if I were to go to this cube, nothing happens because again, it's not one which I can interact with, so this will only come up with something the player can interact with. So this is what we're going over in creating today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And I should also mention as well that this does work in Unreal Engine 4 too. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually start creating the widget, or basically the dot which will appear on screen. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be using an image of a white dot, which we have here. The size I've gone with is 20 by 20 pixels. It doesn't have to be that big. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, whatever you want. That's just the size I've gone with because it's very easy to see, which is especially useful for a tutorial. So once you've got that and imported it in, and I will leave a link in the description down below to the one I'm using as well. But once you've got that, what we want to do is right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. And we're going to create a user widget. I'm going to name this one interact.widget like so as that makes the most sense for me. We're going to open this up straight away. And in here, we're going to go to panel, canvas panel, and add that into our widget here. Then all we need to do is add an image into that selecting this image to be the interact dot we just imported and now we have it in here. The final thing to do is just resize and reposition it. So again you notice mine is 20 by 20 on the image size there so I also just want to change the size x and size y to be 20 by 20. Then I'm going to anchor it to the middle of the screen as that is where I want it to be positioned. Set the position y to 0 and 0 and if we zoom in you'll notice it's not quite centered. So for me, for this size 20 by 20, I found that position X and Y can be minus 10, and that will then be positioned perfectly. But this might be different for you, so what you can do is just use the arrow keys to move it about just to get the perfect position for what you want. So again, for me, let me just re-put it to minus 10, perfectly like so. Obviously, when it's this small, you might not really be able to tell if it's just a couple pixels off center. However, I just like to be as perfect as I can. So. Once we've got all this set up, that is literally all we need to do inside the widget. This is now that setup for what we're going to see. So we can compile, save, and close that like so. Next, we need to actually start creating the functionality of putting this on screen. So what we're going to do is press control space again, and then go to our player blueprint. So we're going to go to third person, blueprints, third person character, or first, whatever it's named for you. And what you'll notice is I've changed it from third person to first person as this mechanic obviously works better in first. It does work in third person as well, but it's better in first person. So if you want to change your third person character to first person like I've done here, I'll leave a link on screen now and in the description below to where you can watch my video on going over how to do that. Once you have done, we're going to go over to the event graph and what we're going to do first is get event begin play. So you can hold down P and left click, or if you've already used it, you can right click and just search for begin play and it'll take you to it like so. If you have already used it, you can also hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting that in there with then zero going to the code you already have, and then one going to the code we're just about to do now. So what we need off of the event begin play is we want to get a create widget with the class being the interact with dot widget we just created. And the return value, we're going to right click and promote a variable naming this interact dot widget. So now we have a reference to it that we can very easily and quickly go to so we can put it on and off screen whenever we need to. So we'll compile and save that. Now under this, we're going to be using event tick. Now you might hear quite a lot to never use event tick, it's very bad for your system. That is true, however, you need to just take that with a grain of salt, especially the never. I wouldn't say never use it, just never use it when you don't need to. With something like what we're going to be doing here, we need it to be constantly updating. So whenever the player moves, it's going to update that. Or if something moves in front of the player, it needs to again be updating. So the easiest and most efficient way for us to be doing that is on event tick. Because what we're doing as well is not demanding at all, so it will be perfectly fine. 
And what we're doing is first off, we're going to hold control and drag in the interact.widget to get it. Then we're going to right click on it and convert to validated get, connecting that in there like so. And what this is doing is it's the exact same as just getting an is valid. So we're going to see if this variable is valid because the event tick oftentimes fires off before event begin play, which means we'll be getting this before it's been set, which will give us an error, which we obviously don't want. So this will resolve that like so. Out of is valid, we're going to get a line trace by channel, perfectly like so. And this is going to be looking at where the player's camera is looking. So we want to get the camera. Out of this, we're going to get world location. So we're just getting where the camera is in the world. Then out of that return value, that can just go straight into start. But we also want to get an add, which will go into end. So get world location goes into start of the line trace and it goes into an addition node, which goes into the end of the line trace. Now, what are we going to be adding to the get world location? Well, that's going to be the direction in which the player is looking. So we can drag out of camera and get forward vector because obviously the player wants to be looking forward and to define a length of this so how far forward the player is looking we're going to come out of return value and get a multiply then we don't want to multiply it by a vector we want this to be a float so we can right click the float icon here go to convert pin and get a float single precision and we're just going to change this to value which we want which for me is 500 so the player can look 500 units in front of them so basically anything that is more than 500 units away, the player can't interact with. And that is going to go into the addition there like so. And then we can just neaten and tidy this all up. For example, double clicking these lines to get some root nodes perfectly like so. And I think that is going to be good for me. So now again, we're just seeing where the player is looking. After this, what we want to do is hold down B, left click to get a branch with the condition being the return value. So if we did hit something and the out hit, we're going to break hit result. So what we hit. We're going to open that up like so. Now out of the hit actor on the break hit result, we're going to get does implement interface and we can close this like so. Because the way we're doing this is we're going to be using blueprint interfaces. Now if you haven't got that set up, don't worry, I'm going to be going over it later on in the video. And because I've not created the interface just yet, I'm going to leave that as blank. However, if you already have an interact interface, just put that in there. Then we're going to hold down B, left click to get another branch with that being the return value and this going into true of the first branch. So again, if we did hit something. And if we did hit something, we want to put the widget on screen. If we didn't, we want to take it off screen. So what we're gonna do is get our interact.widget once again, and we're going to see if it's in the viewport. So get is in viewport. The reason we're doing this is for two reasons. One, to see if we want to add or remove it from the screen. And two, because if it is already on screen and we still want to put it on screen, we don't need to continue doing that. We only need to do it once. So that is why we're doing this here. So let's hold down B left click to get another branch. We're doing a lot of checks, a lot of branches here, with that obviously being the condition. So if it is in the viewport, i.e. true, what do we want to do? Well, this is putting it on screen, but it's already on screen, so we don't want to do anything. So true will be blank. Out of false, so we want to put it on screen, but it isn't on screen, we're going to put it on screen. So we can then get our interact.widget again, and out of this, we're going to add to viewport, just to put it on screen like so. And then obviously once it is on screen, this will be in the viewport, which means it'll be true next time, so nothing is gonna happen. Then out of false of this branch just before that is what we want to be taking it off screen. So we'll get another branch, connecting that into false like so. The condition is once again going to be is in viewport like so. And this one is gonna be the opposite. So if it is in the viewport, i.e. true, we want to remove it. If it's not in the viewport, i.e. false, we don't want to do anything. So we're going to, again, just simply remove from parent from the interact.widget, perfectly like so. And this will now work. However, there's one more thing we need to do. Back towards the first branch, if this is false, we want to, again, see if it is in the viewport, and then if it is, remove it. Because this means we're no longer hitting anything, which means we definitely can't interact with it, so if it is on screen, we need to remove it. So we can just bring this down here like so. And what I'm going to do is actually double click this to get a root node, connecting that in there like so, just to again, keep it looking nice and organized perfectly like this. And that is now all the code done. That's everything that we need to do. So let me just go over this once again. We're going to be seeing where the player is looking. If they're looking at something, we want to see if we can interact with it. If we can, we're going to add it to the screen. If we can't, we're going to remove it from the screen. 
obviously it being the interact dot widget. So we'll compile and save that. Then we're going to minimize this and we're going to create our interact interface. Now I'm going to be going over this very very quickly as I do have other videos going over this more in depth which I'll leave links to on screen now and in the description below again. I'm just doing this very basic and quickly just to show you it's set up and working. So what we're going to do is right click, go to blueprints and blueprint interface. Then I'm just going to call this interact interface like so. Open this up straight away and you want to name the function interact. You can compile, save and close that. That's all you need to do in there. Then back in our third person character blueprint, this does implement interface. We can press this arrow here and it will input our interact interface. If it doesn't do that, simply open it up and then search for the interact interface which you just created and put it in there like so. And we'll compile and save that once again. Then we can close this and now that is all set up and working. All we need now is an item to actually interact with. So again, I'm going to do this very quickly. Right click, blueprint class, actor, this one will just be a cube BP and I'll open that up, add in a cube and I'm going to make this black just so my white interact dot shows up easier on it just again for the purpose of the tutorial and I'll also add in a box collision for something for the player to collide with so they can interact with it like so. And we'll compile and save that, close it and now this is everything completely done and working for us. So let's hit play to test it out after obviously putting the cube in the level like so. So again if I just look at random things it's not going to come on screen as we can't interact with them. If I had to look at this cube however it's also not coming on screen so let's have a look at why that is doing that. And I'll tell you what I've just figured it out is because we didn't actually make this item interactable so that's so very sorry about that just completely skipped my mind. Let's open up our item BP once again so for me that's cube BP and all we need to do is at the class settings we need to add the interface of our interact interface. So now this is actually interactable. And you'll notice we've now got this interface function down here. This is where you then add in your code for interacting with it. But obviously I'm not going over that today. So now this should work perfectly for us because we've now made this interactable. Again, we can look everywhere else, nothing happens, but we look at the cube, we can interact with it. As you'll see, we have this dot here. And if I had to look away from it, the dot is gonna disappear. It only appears when we are looking at it perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is we set up this kind of interact dot widget, again I don't know the best way to describe it, but basically a crosshair which will appear when we look at something which we can interact with perfectly like so. And again it's very easy to adapt onto multiple items and to different things which you want. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.